Welcome to a Code Report Solution video and a supplementary video to a podcast that was released today, at least if you're watching this on December 3rd, 2021. And in that podcast with my co-host Bryce, we solve a Lico problem, specifically this one, and we live code a solution to it in BQN. So what we're going to do in this video is we're first going to solve it in C++ very trivially, then hop over to BQN, BQN solve it there. And uh, yeah, if you want to listen to the podcast and you aren't actually coming here from the podcast, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the corresponding episode. And with that, let's hop into it. So uh, the problem is 905 sort array by parity. And the problem states, given an integer array nums, move all of the even integers to the front of the array, um, and then all of the odd integers to the back. Return any array that satisfies this condition. So if you are familiar with the C++ standard algorithms, there is an algorithm that does exactly this. Um, and that algorithm is called partition. So if we pass it the two iterators that define our uh, vector, so nums begin and nums end, and then all we need to do um, is pass it a lambda that is going to return true whenever our element is even. So we do equals equals zero. There's a couple different ways you can spell this, but they're all gonna do the trick. And then if we just return nums, this should be good to go. So let's go run code. Hopefully this is correct if I didn't make any typos. And although this is different, um, it's still a valid solution because the even numbers are at the front and the odd numbers are at the back. If we go submit, you will see that indeed this does work and we're good to go. So the point is, is we have an algorithm in C++ called partition, and that is basically what the episode of our podcast is called. Um, it's basically stood partition in BQN. So let us hop over um, to our BQN editor. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check this out. And basically, we're going to slowly build this up as we sort of describe in the podcast, and it's going to be a lot easier to understand this with the visual cues. So um, first thing first, we've got our initial array, one, two, three, four, which we're hoping to end up as uh, two, three, or two, four, and one, three, or some permutation of that. And the first thing we want to do is we want to basically get a Boolean mask that corresponds to um, either the even or odd elements. So um, this is modulus, and this is two. So if we compute this, I believe if I just go shift enter, you'll see we get one, zero, one, zero, which is the remainder after you do modulus two. So um, the odd elements are corresponding to the ones here. And once we have this, we can basically use this Boolean mask with a um, algorithm called compress or replicate. And we can first just do this explicitly. So this is gonna be still our Boolean mask. And if we combine this, with replicate, which is just a backslash, this is basically going to filter out any elements that correspond to a zero, or in other words, keep all the elements that correspond to a one. So if we hit this, we're going to end up with one and three. Um, and this is a bit messy because it is uh, repeating the list twice. So the way we can um, use this is basically turn this into uh, a compose and then put a compress here and then puts a right tack here. And this forms a three train or a fork or an S prime combinator, also known as lift A2 in Haskell. And basically what this does is it evaluates this unary function. So this is a binary function, but we're composing it or partially applying it with two, which makes it a unary function. So this is two modulus, this is identity. And so it's gonna evaluate um, each of these functions, I have to get rid of this slash here, with our input. So this will end up being identity one, two, three, four, and this will end up being one, zero, one, zero. And once we have those two values, it's gonna feed those as two arguments to our binary function here, which note is an infix function. So if we do this, we should get the same result, one and three. And so because we want the even numbers at the front and the odd numbers at the back, um, we basically just need to take this create another fork and we'll just copy this to begin with and if we do this this is catenate so we're expecting to see basically one three from here one three from here this catenated together which is going to give us one three one three and if we do that sure enough that's what we have and in order to get the um sort of odd, even numbers at the front we just need to change this boolean mask um to a knot and i believe we can do that this is not right here and this is not going to parse correctly, but I believe if we do this, uh, it's going to work. 
So we've got a lot of parentheses here, but um, this is our, you know, what this is our, our solution. So technically, we can call this sort by parity, um, and then put a little arrow here, and this should still give us the correct answer. So now we've called this a function. We can get rid of the outer parentheses. And this is a valid solution. But in the podcast, I proceed to say that this is not that optimal because we have a lot of repetition here. This is basically identical to this minus the not. Um, so let's see if we can clean this up a bit. So the thing to note is that really when we build up our Boolean mask, um, we're basically using this twice. And that the second time we use it, we're just using a not in front of this. So the key thing to sort of factor out here is let's see if we can get our two modulus outside here and then our identity elsewhere. So let's sort of delete everything and then we have this fork on the inside and what we want is basically we want to do our filters or our compressions twice. So if we do this this is basically going to say pass our left argument here and our right argument here and then uh, pass that those two values to our binary function. If we do this twice here with the catenate in the middle, basically we've got a fork here, a fork here, a fork here, and then an outer fork as well. So if we do this, I'm expecting to see 1313 one, because currently we lost our not. And I think actually at this point we can get rid of the outer parentheses. So this is pretty cool, um, but how do we get the not um, to be in here as well? So what we need to do basically is not this and then use the, I believe this is the B1 combinator, which is just the circle here. And what that's gonna do is it's going to apply this monadic function after the binary functions here. So if we do this, we should see our first one and three change to two and four. And sure enough, that's what happens. Um, but this is still pretty messy, so let's see if we can clean this up a bit. One thing we can do here is that we've got basically a, a fork, a dyadic fork here where we have three different binary functions. This is left, this is right, and this is compress. And this is basically just a longhand form of spelling this. It's saying pass the left argument on the left and the right argument on the right. Well, that's how a binary for function works to begin with. So we can just delete those two things. And then because we don't have three functions anymore, we don't need the parentheses. So sure enough, this will be the same thing. And at this point, you can basically stop, but if you want to get even cuter, you can note that because things are parsed left to right and we only have one character here, or one uh, glyph, if we copy this over to this side and then bring our expression over here to the right side, because things are parsed uh, right to left, we can actually delete um, these parentheses here and then get the same results, except now the even numbers are at the back. Well, luckily, we have the C combinator, which I believe is uh, this little operator, which is a superscript here. And that is then going to say, whatever you're passing to our binary function here, aka catenate, um, basically switch the order that you pass um, the arguments to this binary function. And if you do that, we should get back our 2413. So this is the final solution that I um, sort of settle on in BQM. We go on to talk about why this is actually super awesome when you think about it in a parallel context, but I'm not gonna repeat that conversation in this YouTube video. If you want to go and check that out, like I said, link in the description uh, for the uh, link to that episode of the podcast called Stood Partition in BQM. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.